All right, everyone, so for our second day of class, we're going to shift gears over to start using WordPress. Let me show you a couple of quick examples of WordPress sites. Um, because WordPress is so powerful, it can create a variety of types of sites. And you can look at these also if you want. Uh, and honestly, you'll have to remind me. I teach way too many classes. You remind me if I've shown this last week or not. Uh, did I mention a few of the websites of the different clients that my company has worked with? In this class? Yes. You showed us your site, but it had the, the company of the year. But I don't think you said it was any example sites. Not sure. Maybe not example sites. Okay, well, I'll show at least one. Um, if you want to also check this out, you can go to the web browser to your web browser. You might have heard about this uh, company. It's nearby, aquiestexcoco.com. Um, this is a Mexican food restaurant right over there on Broadway in Chula Vista. We've worked with them since 2010. And uh, this is the client where we've done the most for them. We made their website, do their photography, do their blogging, do their social media, all of that stuff. Marketing, human resources. So it's one of the most full-featured clients my company works with. And if you go back to my company's website, you'll see the portfolio of other companies we work with. This, of course, is a WordPress site. Behind the scenes of it all, it's made in HTML. And obviously, what we worked with last time doesn't compare to this. This is 632 lines of code. And that's not the most complex site there can be. There can be a site with thousands of lines of code. But this still, behind the scenes, is all HTML, what we touched upon last time, the homework assignment due tonight. And so there's a lot of software out there to let you create websites without having to do the code. The code is valuable to know. It's valuable to know what is this line of code right here, or maybe why is something not working. So code is still valuable. But depending on what we're, on what we're trying to accomplish, do I really want to learn a lot of code or do I want to make a website? You have to answer that for yourself. So most of the time with clients nowadays, we're making them a WordPress website, which of course we often still need to get into the code to make changes here and there. And so this site is uh, WordPress. It's mobile friendly. That means it adapts to a desktop computer. It adapts to a mobile device. If you visit it on the mobile, it looks good on mobile. It's got visual interest. It's got a slideshow. It's got these call out boxes. You can edit all of this, you have events and a blog and, and all of that. So this is a WordPress site, and what we're going to do is dip our toes in the world of using WordPress this week and next week. And um, I do recommend other classes to get more in-depth. Uh, so I believe uh, the, if you're in the 123 class, you are seeing some exposure to WordPress either soon or now or something. So. Yes. All right, quick, quick question. Does WordPress integrate into uh, GoDaddy or uh, what I'm using? Uh, the web hosting out there? Like most. The separate, most separate. of the web hostings, yes. Most of them will will work with GoDaddy. Uh, I mean, WordPress will work with most of them, like GoDaddy, Bluehost, One and One, HostGator. There's lots of them. It's it's kind of rare nowadays that a hosting provider doesn't work with WordPress maybe like five years ago not all of them worked with it but right. then now they pretty much all better work with them because it's such popular software yeah. WordPress is free, right? I mean, basically yes the WordPress software is free but uh, but other aspects are not such as this site akiestexcoco.com this web address that's part of the that's part of the requirement of getting online to actually have your piece of the internet your name that's what you have to pay for. Uh, we'll talk about those things a little bit later, but in short, one of the great things about WordPress, the software itself, is that it's free. Uh, if you're using software like uh, Dreamweaver, for example, which is very powerful, popular software, that's not free. That's going to range between $20 a month to $40 a month, depending on your, on your uh, credentials and such. If you're a student, I believe it's $20 a month. If you're not, it's about $40 a month month after month, year after year, the more you want to use it. WordPress by itself is free, but there are other aspects that are not, which we'll talk about. Yes? Uh, do you have any 
you have to connect um, um, WordPress to you know what host to be able to use WordPress, whether it's going to go online or not? If you're going to use WordPress but not put it online, it doesn't have to be connected to a host. You can run it virtually on your computer. Um, but if you do then want it to be visible to people, 99% of the time you're going to put it on a web host. Yes? But if you're going to run it locally, you need SAM for MAMP or WAMP. Sure. So you, you have to basically have PHP in my SQL on your computer. Which isn't a big deal, but some computers will just they'll stop at the, the, the pass. I'm just asking because, like, if you're not, if you don't want to put it online, you just want to make stuff to be able to have in your portfolio and put it on a on a hard drive or um, oh, okay, or something, but you don't want to have to pay for the ho pay for hosting. That's a slightly different answer because the, the thing about WordPress is that it relies on a database. It relies on infrastructure. You're not really going to have that exactly on a USB drive or Google Drive. So there's probably ways to do it if you really kind of figure it out, but it's not quite made for that. Um, if you want a portfolio, you, you can use other software that might give you a better result if you don't want it to be the full featured website. Yeah, Dreamweaver um, can be a very basic kind of HTML file, and that's all you might need because WordPress does require databases and other advanced sort of things. You can always use just the regular WordPress.com, right? If you wanted to create a free portfolio. Yes, and that's actually what we're about to talk about right now. So good, good, uh, good thinking ahead. So here. This and many of the clients, 99% of the clients we work with, they go to a provider, and we'll talk about them later, GoDaddy, Bluehost, whatever. They go to a provider, they pay their amount, and it's going to range between $20 a year to $120 a year. It really ranges. Oftentimes these companies are going to sell you service for the first year very cheaply because they're all in competition. You know, $20 a year to get online. That's not so bad. But then the price goes back up to like, you know, $40 a year, $80, whatever. We'll look at that later. And as I did say in this class, good news, bad news, good news is that the good news is that there's no required book. The bad news is that you are required to buy hosting provider. We'll talk about that later. The good news is then you'll have a real website with your real domain name and such. Uh, so a book or a website, you know, either or. Um, but I think a website's going to be a little more valuable for us, especially if we're going to be serious about getting uh, our online presence or becoming web designers and such. We'll talk about that later, probably in a month, month and a half or so. But before we get to the paid stuff, we'll use the free stuff. So let's do this. Go ahead and go up to your web browser. Let's go to wordpress.org. O-R-G. Wordpress.org. There's two WordPress websites, WordPress.org and another one we'll see in a moment. WordPress.org is basically where you download the software, where you read the manual, where you ask for help. Do you notice there's a support button there? You can go to the forums and ask questions and some WordPress expert will answer you eventually for free. Because it's free, it might not be an answer right away. You can go to the support documentation and you can read the full manual, everything about WordPress, how it all works completely and such. You've also got then a button to download WordPress and then use it. There's the software. Download it for free. And you can do other things here such as get yourself a snazzy WordPress shirt to really show off how you love WordPress. But WordPress.org, the organization, is for the tech people. For, for us that we want to learn how it works, fix our problems, get answers, download the latest software, keep up with the news, what's new. Um, what we're going to use for the following assignment to get our feet wet with WordPress is we're going to use the sister website, WordPress.com. If we go to WordPress.com and together right now, we will create a free account here which will give us the full powered WordPress, basically. We will get a website right now powered by WordPress. We will learn the, the, the basics of WordPress and we'll have a website. Because this class, the totality of it is web search engine visibility. We, we want to have a website to promote online. 
you don't have a website? No problem. We're about to build one in WordPress right here. We're not going to spend a whole semester on this. We're going to spend two, maybe three weeks on it because there are other classes that will teach you more. Because this class is more about, I've got a website, I want it to get found, so we're going to build a website. Here, I see we've got um, create website, create blog. I guess there's a different, I haven't seen this recently, but I guess now they delineate between website and blog. So I'm going to see this for the first time also. But here we've got create your new website for free. WordPress.com is the best place for your personal blog or business site. Create a website, start a blog, discover, easy to use. WordPress powers 25% of the internet. So 25% of the sites all over the world use WordPress. It's one of the popular, most popular software out there. So what we're going to do here, if you've already got a website, you can use your website. But I'm going to highly recommend, and it'll be the first, it'll be the next assignment, we are going to create an account here together. So at WordPress.com, let's click Create Website. So at the top, we've got five steps that we're going to accomplish. What is your website about? Here, you can make this up completely. It can be completely fake. That's OK. For the purposes of this class, you can make up completely a website. You can make a website for something real. That's fine, too. When we're done with these lessons on WordPress, if you'd like, you can delete this all. That's OK as well. So here, whatever of yours makes sense, I oftentimes have a fictional company that I, when I teach classes on this, I have this fictional company, Victor's Bakery. So my bakery, we sell, you know, we sell baked goods. Which of these would fit best for my type of fictional company? Not health and wellness because my cookies are full of butter. <laughs> um, most likely businesses and services, yes. Possibly lifestyle. That name can, I mean, that category can kind of encompass it. You know, the baking lifestyle and such, I suppose. I don't think there's a wrong answer if you choose any one of these, not quite how you think, and I believe you can change them later on. So there's no real wrong answer, but probably you're going to most likely go with business because that's a big encompassing uh, topic. So I'm going to select business and service. There are some subsections of business, business and service maybe to get me a little bit more detailed. Let's see, automotive, restaurant, locales, consulting, real estate. On my particular case, perhaps I will select locales, restaurants and locales, because my fictional companies, let's say I'm on Main Street. I have a business at a physical location. It's a locale, so I'm going to select locale. On your particular one, if you're not quite sure what to select, maybe have me check it and we might figure it out. But I'm going to select locales. If, you've, you're, if you're making your own web design business, perhaps, maybe consulting. That's kind of what would make sense to me if you're like a freelance web designer. I'll select locales. Step two. I showed a moment ago on that client, Texcoco, they have a particular design. WordPress is basically a shell, and on it we can attach themes, we can attach designs. And the great thing about it is we can change designs relatively easily. If you make a website in the classic way, you'd have to be editing the um, you'd have to be editing the code, and then once you change the design of a page, you have to make sure all the pages get that design, and maybe you didn't change your code properly, and now one page looks like the old design, and your other pages are the new design, or other things happen. With WordPress, literally with the click of a button, I can change from one design to another. I may have to massage the details, but then the website will now have a brand new design very quickly. So that's what we're seeing here on step two. Choose a theme. No need to overthink it. You can always switch to a different theme later. So I'm seeing a bunch of different ones. I can skip it. Um, if you don't see exactly what I see, that's OK. But I'm going to select, um, if you see one called 80s, I'm going to select 80s. If you don't, 
just try to select something that looks nice. These WordPress themes, we have free versions, we have paid versions. Many times nowadays in the world of the web, there's this model known as the freemium model. Freemium, free and premium. So if free means free, what does premium mean? Paid. Paid, not free. Freemium is in the middle, that perhaps you have some aspects of something that are free and then other aspects that are paid. So these themes, in my case, uh, seem to be free. If there were no, if there were any themes that were not free, they should have a little dollar symbol on them. Does anyone see any that say dollar or paid or anything like that? So skip those for the moment. Don't get the paid ones. And I'll talk in detail about that a little bit later. But just pick any free theme. I'm going to go with 80s. So just pick the one you like. Step three. Yes. Um, if you have like a, a membership or if you purchase the theme that you can use like through other like parties, could you upload it through this regular WordPress.com instead of doing it like the old way and still use their site or do you have to use these free ones on this one? To my knowledge, um, so the WordPress.com has a lot of positives, but it has a few negatives. And to my knowledge, that's one of the negatives, that you can't use a theme from another location. You have to use the ones that are built into WordPress.com. They may or may not have changed that, but to my knowledge, that's how that is. And WordPress.com is going to be really good, but honestly, I have to say at a certain point, we're going to see that it's training wheels because it doesn't have some abilities like many of the themes that we might want. It doesn't have the big thing of... Uh, plugins when we get to plugins. So this will be fine as a starting point to work with WordPress, but honestly later on that's why we're gonna make it the requirement that we have to buy a provider later because then we can have the full featured WordPress. So I did say that this is gonna be free, but here it's popping up to say, hey, why not pay for this? Um, I'll explain that in a moment. Here it's asking for a domain name or keyword. So let's say again I would like Victor's Bakery. So what if I want victorsbakery.com? In my case, victorsbakery.com is already taken. It's going to give me a couple of suggestions. I can do victorsbakery.net, .org, .co, but notice those say $18 a year. Well, that's not so expensive to get your own piece of the internet, a yearly subscription to have a web address, $18 and such. It's not that expensive. But if I don't want to pay for it, I have another option here. I have the other option right here. Victor's Bakery, com, blog, dot wordpress dot com. Um, for the purposes of this class, that would be fine. Uh, for a real website, maybe not. I want it to say victorsbakery.com. So the, one of the catches of using WordPress.com is that if you want the full free version, they're going to attach .wordpress.com to your site address. If you don't want the WordPress.com attachment, $18 a year. Um, let me try something here. The original Vict Victor's Bakery. I can try different names. It, it says the original Victor's Bakery.com is available. $18 a year. So sometimes the name is taken, uh, sometimes not. And you have the option also to use the free version, which will, uh, which will attach WordPress.com. Now, now yes. Do you use that word hosted? It will host it as well. Mm -hmm. So we're right now we're we're getting the domain name, but there are two aspects to this. Let me make a couple of notes here. If you'd like to make some notes to get your piece of the web, you need two things: Dom uh, domain and hosting. 
domain is simply the web address. So victor.com. And you need hosting, which is the web server. So the hard disk. Where are you storing your files? Where are you storing your pictures? Where are you storing your products? Where are you storing your text? Because the domain, the domain name, is only the name. So think about it in the real world. There is a street address somewhere, 123 Main Street. And on 123 Main Street is a building. So you might own the land, 123 Main Street, but do you have a house there? Do you have a building there? That's the web. You have to own the domain name, which is a, which is a location on the internet, and then you need hosting, which is a place to build your website, to put your pictures, to put whatever your website is about. And these prices range a lot. I often see deals. I often see, uh, when we get to this in a few weeks, $2 a year for the first year, in quotation marks, uh, for the domain name. And then prices like you know, $5.99 per month for the hosting. These range all over the place. Um, and oftentimes these are introductory prices and then they go up a bit. Oftentimes I see after one year, instead of it being $12, it's a little bit more like $15 per year. And instead of $5.99, I often see it, it goes up to like $8 a year. Like that. Yes? Just curious, who do you use for hosting in general? When we get to the deeper discussion of it, uh, we'll, we'll do that. But let me mention a couple at the moment. There's, here's some big ones. Here's some that I'll mention that I have dealt with. Um, with clients. GoDaddy, Bluehost, HostMonster, HostGator. These are ones that my company has dealt with directly. These are the ones I can vouch for to, to various degrees. And there's going to be dozens and dozens of more. I don't know them all. And if you're iffy on one of them, I would look up um, Amazing Web Host testimonials right do a search on Google Bing whatever look for testimonials of these companies people will tell you amazing web host reviews look them up people have a, a opined about them I don't have an opinion about all of them these are opinions of the ones I've worked with they're all good yes now uh, with all these that you've worked with are you uh, essentially setting up your clients uh, website and hosting through your hosting or do you specifically uh, create one for them or set it all up for them so they have their own? It's been less of a hassle if we sit with the client and have them set it up. You know, we're sitting with them. They're filling it all in. They're putting their credit cards and all of that. It's been better in the long term that way because we've done it over the phone, and that's a hassle. We've done it that we pay for it, and then they reimburse us, and that's a hassle. And then there's also the reseller approach where we have a reseller account and they basically purchase it through us and we're the middleman and we get a cut and all of that and that's nice but that's another hassle so honestly less hassle is that with the client you set it up with them you put in all their credit card info and everything and then it's done so what go with, with what wordpress.com is telling us right now is you can get the domain name right now and it's saying eighteen dollars a year so honestly it is one of the pricier ones I don't quite recommend it I don't quite recommend buying your domain name at wordpress.com it's uh, more affordable at other places yes I think I've heard of them so uh, they're all going to try to upsell you nowadays, but uh, Hover.com, okay, good. I, I think I've heard of them, but I haven't dealt with them myself. For hosting or for domain or domain. both? It's, just domain. it's not that bad. It's not that bad. I see it $12, $15, $19. not that bad. Uh, it can be cheaper down to $2 if you get a bundle and such, but 15 is not so bad. Does anyone else have any opinions? Has anyone dealt with any of any other hosting provider? Well, whenever, whenever I just want to randomly First, get one that I that uh, get a domain just for maybe for the future, it's always worked. I Google literally GoDaddy ninety nine cent hosting, hmm. and then even though it's like depending on the 
promo that almost always yields. Actually, every time I've, I've tried it, it's yielded the uh, promo for me to get a 99 cent mm. hosting account. And I don't even have to create a new, a new account. I just add it to my whole. 99 cents for the first year, right? For the first year. Then it goes back to about $12 or exactly. so. Yeah. But, you know, for just to, to hold that, like, ooh, let me reserve, let me park that just in case yeah. I want to develop that in the future. Sure. <laughs> Squarespace is on a different uh, on a different playing field in that they're trying to be more of the full featured approach. So I've heard of Squarespace. I've dealt with I've people with Delta Space, and it's pretty good for some purposes. But the problem mm -hmm. is, it does it is not, to my knowledge, it is not compatible with WordPress. So if you're going to make a WordPress site, it's not compatible. But if that doesn't matter, Squarespace makes a great kind of website as well. There's also various mom and pop shops, you know, local San Diego based ones. And sometimes students come in and say, well, what about this one? And I've used this one. Is it good? I don't know. I haven't heard of them. But honestly, what I have to say about the mom and pop shops, the local ones, don't go for them. I like to frequent and I like to promote local businesses, yes, but not in this case, because oftentimes the local shops still have to get their services from the big boys. They still have to connect to Bluehost to get their internet access. That means they're marking you up. Maybe they're giving you great tech support and maybe it's worth it. Great. But if you're really managing your budget and such, are you going to pay a middleman or are you going to go directly to the big ones? I mean, it's up to you, of course. When we get to this point when it's going to be a requirement to create the site, I'm going to give recommendations, but you can set it up however you'd like. We'll get to that later. Here, we're still wrestling with a domain name, and I'm going to suggest just get the free one. It's going to have WordPress.com, but that's okay for this upcoming assignment. So I'm just going to select the, the free one. And then we get to the other aspect of this. Remember I said, you've got domain and you've got hosting. Where are you going to store all your stuff? You've got the plot of land. Now you need to build that house. And look at these prices. There's the free one. And it says a WordPress site loaded with powerful features, 3 gigabytes of space, support from the WordPress community. And then 825 a month, build yearly. 2492 per month build yearly for the premium version for the business version well what's included more space even more space custom site address no ads custom design the expensive one allows you to do e-commerce unlimited premium themes google analytics live chat support this i think is also very expensive Twenty-four ninety-two per year. If we do some calculations here. Twenty-four ninety-two times twelve. You're going to be looking at three hundred dollars per year to have this one. And honestly, with three hundred dollars on something else like Bluehost or GoDaddy, that's going to last you like three or four years. This is three hundred dollars for one year. If you go to these other providers, that's going to be like three years of service, four years. So in our case here, we're going to do the free plan. I don't recommend to pay for any of the WordPress stuff here. Later, I'll say I recommend it at Bluehost or GoDaddy or whatever. But here, we'll just select free plan. We're creating this account. Therefore, we need an email address to be able to retrieve our login information, to log in and all of that. Right here, you want to plug in a real email address so they can send you a confirmation email so you can get the full access. The username should be the same as your web address, so mine's going to be the original Victor's Bakery wordpress.com that's my username fine um, I don't think I can change it because these names are unique Victor's Bakery. Uh, yeah already taken so most likely the same name that you set up previously and then a password so put in a password here by creating an account you agree to their fascinating terms of service. So there's some terms there. No one reads these things, but uh, 
we all agree to them if we want to use them and basically it's talking about you're not going to use the service to create you know like terrorist websites and uh, harassing websites and all of this weird stuff so most of you should be safe with the kind of website you're going to create here but there are terms of service and if you violate them your site gets shut down because yeah it's your site but you're using their infrastructure and this contract says you agree to that so if you violate the terms your site goes down I'm going to select create my account Okay, so <clears throat> anyone need any help? Did everyone manage to create their account here? Okay, so we've created an account. When you go home, you're excited, you want to keep working on your site, you're going to get your first little road, uh, your, first, your first little speed bump. So let's do this. I've been setting this up in Google Chrome. I'm going to close my browser completely. You can log out if you'd like, but I'm going to close the browser completely and I'm going to open a different web browser just to show you because there's a little speed bump here that I want to show you when you go do it yourself. You know, I make it look so easy here. And then when you do it at your house, it's a little different. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to switch to a completely different browser. I was in Chrome. I'm going to switch to Firefox. You can switch to whatever other browser we're going to go back to wordpress.com you want to go back to wordpress.com and at the very top right click login So click login at the top right. Go ahead and log in. No, I just don't want people to see my password. Um, okay, so you're going to log in back to WordPress.com, and if you've logged in like me, it's going to be like this, I guess. Uh, you might see something similar, but I don't see my website like I did a moment ago. WordPress is part um, web site creation tool and part social network to some degree because I can create a website and I can have people like my posts and follow my website and comment on my content so when I log in it's telling me these are the websites you are following at the very top left I've got my site and reader so this is the thing about wordpress.com I can follow websites websites can follow me if they are also on WordPress. And it's kind of like a social network, Facebook, like Twitter, whatever. But this is one of our first little speed bumps here. So when you log in at home, you're going to be dropped into the reader. You want to switch over to my site. On the top left, my site. And if you've created one website, it'll be listed there. So I've got that website, BMC Inc. It's the free plan, etc. It's got all of these buttons. I got one website. And notice I have a button right there add a new WordPress. I can create as many WordPress sites as I want in this one account. That could be valuable because I can create one website about one topic, one website about another topic, and I have them both in my one account. 
the account that I made up a moment ago. So, do you see then that you have to you have to be aware of am I under my site or am I under reader I'm under my site and you're gonna see various buttons here but honestly I think this is training wheels for training wheels these buttons over here if you're gonna be serious about WordPress and eventually when we get when we set ourselves up with the wordpress.org we're not gonna have that so I don't even teach this thing I'm gonna show you this do any of you see and the very bottom of this menu do any of you see something that says WP admin some of you won't see it probably but uh, most likely if you don't see WP admin that might mean you haven't confirmed your email address you need to do that at some point but the point is, I want to go to the more powerful WP Admin. And if you don't have that link, that's okay. Here's how you can get to it. Click on... Click on the name of your website near the top. Do you see the name of your website with a little home button? Click on that. That takes you to look at your website like this is what people look at it like and now if you hover over the menu at the top left do you see WP admin there so we want to go to the WP admin another way to get to it is notice my web address the name of my website dot com slash WP dash admin so a couple of ways to go to the dashboard. I want to go to the dashboard, not the training wheels that I was at a moment ago. I want to go to look at it like this. So I want to make sure at this point I'll pause briefly. Is everyone at here? Is everyone here at the dashboard of our website? The full power of our website. Oh. All right, let me check you right now. We want to make sure we're all on our dashboard. Yeah. Okay, so the dashboard. This um, is the is the fuller power of WordPress. Um, this is something that I can teach for eighteen weeks straight. WordPress is uh, powerful, and there's lots that we can talk about it but that's a little bit out of the scope of our class. We're going to be talking about some important things about it, but uh, not every aspect. There's books that I can recommend and tutorials that I can recommend, classes that I can recommend, but we're, we're going to look at enough of it so that we are, so that we're creating something. Um, what I want to do is, there's various menu items on the left. Uh, on the left side, hover over Appearance and select Themes. This takes you back to a screen where you can select a theme. And on this screen, you're going to get more options than we saw on the first setup screen. And here I am clearly seeing some things are not free. The DD theme is $79. The periodical is $69 or this is free canopy is free so I get a bunch of themes to choose from and some free some not you can create a nice looking website a valuable website a 
a useful website with a free theme. It'll work, but be advised that if you're using one of the free themes, probably other people are using the free themes because they're as cheap as you. No, I mean because they're also not wanting to spend on these things. So your own website might look like someone else's. Now, it is 25% of the world's websites, but that's hundreds of millions of websites. And so here, I can look at the top trending themes popular themes, newest themes. Trending themes might look really nice, but that means that people, other people, are also um, using them. And so my theme might look like someone else's. We will be able to still customize them to some degree, but be advised that trending and popular themes are just that. If they're popular, other people are using them too. We've got newest. You might find a diamond in the rough there, Revelar, for example, or Escu, es, Escutcheon. So you get all of these different designs. Basically, our existing content will migrate over to this theme relatively easily. Oftentimes, though, we do need to do a little bit of massaging in that the wrong item got into your menu, but we'll talk about that. Just so that we're all kind of on the same page, so that we're all kind of looking at the same thing, let's do this. At the top, you've also got search. On search, let's search for this theme called 2016. Type 2016, press enter. You should get the default basic 2016 official theme. Not that interesting looking, but just so that we're all kind of on the same page, we're looking at the same thing. When I say let's do this, let's do that, we're going to select the, this, this theme. If you'd like to select another one, sure, but I'm going to recommend you do 2016 for the moment. I've searched 2016. And then notice, if you hover your mouse over the theme, you've got Theme Details, Activate Preview. If you click Theme Details, it's just going to tell you this is our popular theme, whatever. It's accessible. It has these features. Great. We can preview it, but I know we're going to use it. So on the 2016 theme, go ahead and click Activate. Uh, it looks like I get a pop-up about customizing. Just uh, skip that for the moment. Just close any customize screen. And now this tells me that I've got the active theme 2016. You can easily switch between themes. How does it actually look like? Hover your mouse on the top left where it says My Site View Site. That's how you can actually see what it looks like to people. In the dashboard here, this is what it looks like to me as the administrator. I want to switch over to view site. So hover over your name of, hover over my sites at the top left, and then view site. And there's the site. Very boring, but I want to create one that we all can look at at the moment. Later on, we'll get a better theme. Just to tell you about it in the real world. When my company deals with clients, we tell them that there are three options for them, that we can provide three things for them, three options. Uh, when PMD Interactive courts a client, we have level one, level two, level three. Level one is to use a, uh, a free theme with optional basic customization. All of these themes that we can download here will have a button that, uh, that says customize. And we'll be able to some degree, depending on the theme, change the background color, add a header picture, change the text color, whatever the theme author has allowed us to do. 
that's level one. It's also the level that is the most affordable for the client. Level two, which is a little bit more expensive, use a premium theme and highly customize it. Highly customize it. Um, so that would be with the client, we're sitting down, we're browsing these theme galleries, and the client says, oh, I like that one, or I like this one, and maybe we can change it like this and like that. And so that's then, they choose a, they choose a, a starting point of a website, and then we highly customize it. Not, on the, not through the basic customization that the author allows us, but through the more powerful code editing. That's where code editing is still going to come in. We can write HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. We can start with a premium theme that has many of the bells and whistles that they need, but then we go in, roll up our sleeves, and write code, change the site. It's like if I were buying a, a classic car, a classic beat-up car, and I was restoring it to its former glory. That requires a lot of time and effort and skill. So here, we're taking a theme that might look really nice, but if I can get that premium theme, someone else can also pay the $40, the $80 for that theme. But what we're doing, what we're providing for them, is then we're customizing it. We're going in, and it's like getting a fixer-upper house. You know, it's a nice house, but we're going to fix it up and make it better than it was before. That's more time, more effort, more expense for the client, because we're doing code editing. And the third level is even more expensive. Let me put in a couple more, more expensive. Because this one is fully customized original WordPress theme. No theme from the free or premium sections. No theme that exists anywhere on any site, like Theme Forest or whatever. One that we create from scratch all of the code. You notice that is much more expensive. When we talk to the client, we tell them, don't even bother with option three. Even though we're going to make more money that way, we're telling them, don't go with option three. Don't pay us so much. Okay. Because it's so much more complicated for the client, so much more time consuming. Not quite worth it. You're, we recommend for them to do level two. Let's look at a cool starting point of a theme, and then we will make it better. And that's the beauty of WordPress, that all of this software, all of this content is is available for you to do that. You can start with a paid theme and then you can change it. You can update it and customize it. Because option three, much more time consuming, stressful for us to design, stressful for the client because it takes so long, potentially. And the end result is, well, you get something super unique, but you could have spent your money on other things, like social media, like an SEO uh, optimization strategy and such. Yes. Uh, so with the fully customization option, uh, would you, after you get your hosting in your site, would you still be installing WordPress onto your cPanel? Yes. So you get a cPanel to drop that code in there? Yes, you're still going to need the basic WordPress. It's like, okay, yeah, we're going to build a house, but we still need the plot of land, yeah. and that's WordPress. We still need the foundation, and that's WordPress. We can create it in something else, like classic HTML or Joomla or whatever, but the whole point is we're using WordPress as this foundation to build on top of. Oh. Well, we had any takers for option three? Mm, wait a minute, we did, but it was a while ago. It was like five, six years ago. Um, it's just not that um, valuable for the client because, yes, it is more expensive and such, but nowadays, honestly, it's not just your website. You're going to need a marketing strategy, which we'll talk about in this class. You're going to need social media, which we'll talk about in this class. You're going to need blogging. You're going to need content. We'll talk about all that stuff. It's not just a website. Why blow all your money on, an, on just the website? You've still got to spend on other things because it's not true. If you build it, they will not come. If you build it and market it, they will come. So it's better for them to spend their money that way. So where we're at here is that on our site, we are, uh, we've got this this uh, basic site 
set up here. It's not that interesting looking, but we'll talk about customization and such. I'm on I'm on the I'm on the user view of the site. I want to get back to the administrator view. Depending on your on your WordPress here, if you hover your mouse over my site again, you may see WP admin. You may not. If you don't see WP admin, you need to make a note that the address is the name of your site slash WP dash admin. So we need to switch back and forth. The, the user view and the admin view. Let's go back to the admin view. Either click on it in the menu, WP admin, or type it in the address. I want to jump down to, on the menu on the left, I want to jump down to settings, hover over settings, and then select general. Settings general. You might not have noticed it, but on my particular site, at the top of my page, it says the name of my website, literally. The you know, it has to just run together, not like a real name on my site. So notice that's where you can edit it, your site title. Even if the name that you wanted was gone and it asked you to put a weird name like that, you can still edit this. This one is not locked in. I will call this Victor's Bakery with proper spelling and spaces and apostrophes and all of that. And off topic here. Um, I like to share this because not everyone knows this. Uh, what's the what's the current language that is taking over online that we're all going to be speaking in five years? Computer language. That language of smiley faces and cats oh, and thumbs oh, up oh, and all of that. Emoji. Emoji. So. Let's go to this website, getemoji.com. Because you can easily type emoji on your mobile device. These things come with it built in. But you can also type emoji on your computer. Um, if you go to getemoji.com, this is a list of all the emoji. You can just copy and paste. So let's say I want to put this cool little alien icon. Just select it, copy it, and I'm going to have Victor's Bakery Alien. And that will be up on my address. Wow. So getemoji.com, they're all listed here. They're all com cross compatible. These that are blank just means that our version of Windows can't understand it. So unfortunately, unfortunately, you're not going to see the newest ones like the little smiley face with money tongue. Have you seen that one? So some of these are not compatible, but you can get all the classic and important ones. You don't get the middle finger yet. It's not compatible on Windows. To get the baby and Santa Claus and so are, are kids. They, like, a font? they are a font, technically. Yeah, this is text, and uh, the computer renders it as as a graphical element. So, if any of these seem interesting, copy and paste it if you'd like. But I'm letting you know that uh, here's how you can access emoji if you don't have if you don't have it on your mobile device or desktop. You can also search so at the top if you're looking, if you go to the search box, money. I've got a banking company. So there you go. I can get the money bag emoji icon. I can get the flying money, money mouth face. It's not compatible with Windows 7 at the moment, but Android people will be able to see it, iPhone people, etc. Anyway, that's a little off topic, but here then I am adding that emoji. It's just copy and paste. It's text. And I'm changing the, the name of my title of my website. That's not changing your web address. It's still going to be that one that you made up here, and that is editable in another way. And I wouldn't worry about that, because if you're following with me, this is just a testing website anyway. Or your real website. We'll get to that later.
this title is what will appear on screen. That. So then it, it renders it to the color version. So this is the settings, and then there's also a tagline when we talk about this in more detail. So there's an art and a science that we'll be talking about of SEO, search engine optimization. I've got a website, I want people to find it. Because nowadays, even though they still keep dropping it on your doorstep, no one uses that phone book. You keep getting that phone book, no one uses that phone book. People use online, people use Bing, people use Google, people use Yahoo, DuckDuckGo, whatever. They use a web search. And nowadays, more often, they're doing something like this. What's a good Mexican food restaurant nearby? I asked my phone. It understood my natural language query, which just means I asked it, and it gave me Tacos del Poblano, 1.7 miles away, 233 Yelp reviews, 4 stars. El Dorado Mexican, 3.3 miles away, 38 reviews, 4.5 stars. Gracelia's Taco Shop, 27 reviews, 4 stars, blah, 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 2 miles away. This is what's happening more and more. You might never have done this. You may never do this. You may, know, you may not know people that have ever done this. But more and more people are using mobile devices to search online and asking their phone. Mine's a Windows phone. I just asked Cortana. You've got an iPhone. You've asked Siri. You've got, I, uh, you've got Android. You've asked Google Windows. Play or whatever. Yeah, Windows phone right here. Why? Because they're cool. No, they're not. <laughs> yeah, I love they're them. horrible. No, I love them. I'll show you so many cool photos I've taken. No. Gmail. I don't care. I don't use Gmail. <laughs> Outlook. Oh, Microsoft? Yeah, it's wow. Microsoft Windows. Yeah. So anyway. No. So anyway. So anyway, the um, whatever device you're using to search with, now you're doing more natural language queries, which just means asking Google or Bing or whatever, Siri, Cortana, whatever, you're asking it a more natural question. And I'm getting to this tagline. This says, in a few words, explain what this site is about. This sh would be better, and I hope they change it soon, to say something like, write a sentence about your website. Because this makes me think, I'm going to put keywords, I'm going to put what are people searching for. No, I would write a real sentence that succinctly explains what my site is about in case someone checks, like I did, Mexican food restaurants nearby. I want to put in some of those words onto my tagline if they apply. We're going to talk about this in detail because we can easily over-optimize. We can easily accidentally create spam kind of optimization. We'll get to that later. But at this point right here, I would write something like this. Family-owned bakery in the heart of Eastlake since 1989. I've written a real sentence for a real person, but I've also filled it with these keywords. Bakery, Eastlake, 1989, family. I'm not literally writing family, comma, Eastlake, comma, bakery, whatever. I'm writing a real sentence for when someone does a Google search, Bing search, whatever, and they type a real sentence. After us using the web for years and years and years, we know that to do a basic kind of search is not going to give you a good result. Many of us know that the more specific we are when we search, the better result we get. So here I'm being specific. So I'm trying to type something that would that most likely someone would search for. So think of it in being term in, in terms of you, how would your potential clients find your website? And when we do this for real, this will be much more important. For this testing site, something to think about. But when we do this for real, we're going to focus more on it and we'll be thinking in those terms. How can a person find me? What can I write that will be bait for someone to find me? And we can edit this as many times as we want. On the settings here, I also want to set the time zone. It's the wrong time zone. Where in the world is UTC0? 
Greenwich Mean Time in London. So last time I checked, we are not in London. Yes, this is Universal Coordinated Time, UTC, but it's Greenwich Mean Time in, in London. Uh, so what's our UTC offset? Negative 8 or positive 8? Positive 8 would take us to China, I think. Negative 8 is... Um, that means we're 8 hours behind that time zone. So if we add 8 hours, it tells us what time it is in London. So when I'm at... Uh, Kearney Mesa, when I wrap up my class over there, it's 10 p.m. I drive home, I listen to the BBC, and they're saying good morning at 10 p.m., which is their 6 a.m. So whatever, if we add eight hours now, it's whatever there is, it is for them. Uh, so negative eight would be California time. Don't worry about putting this because you're not going to remember it. Instead, put in Los Angeles. And so we want the proper time zone for our website. And there's a lot of cities to choose from, so instead of trying to find it, just look at this trick here. Click on the time zone box and start typing LOS, and it should jump you down to Los Angeles. There's no San Diego, but same time zone. If you'd like to change your date format, you could. I'm going to leave it the default. You can change your time format. You can change your week starts on. Sometimes you see calendars that the week starts on Sunday. Whatever you'd like, I'm going to leave it by default. Monday. Language. What language is your blog primarily written in? What's the language of your website? I'm going to keep it English. If you're primarily writing for an audience in Spanish, in Hebrew, Tagalog, uh, Russian, um, Greek, etc., sure, change it to that language. If you're trying to change the interface of WordPress to be in Spanish, it shows you go to that other setting and you can change your WordPress to be in German. If you made any changes here, and I did, I'm going to select Save. This picture we'll get back to later because I don't have a picture handy, but this would be an icon for my website. Notice I've already set this up on another day, and I've got an icon up here for my website. Um, so that's what it would be asking you for here. I don't have my picture handy, so I won't add one, but later on I can, I can add it. Any questions on this screen? Okay, let's go. We're not going to look at every setting screen, but I'll mention a couple of good ones. Let's go over to the reading settings. So under your settings menu, select reading. Now, if I go back to, well, let me show it to you this way. WordPress traditionally has been software to create a blog website. Let me show you an example of one of my websites. This is a personal website uh, about my stuff. And so I like to collect comic books. I read comic books, collect comic books. I go to Comic-Con. And so I've got a website about that stuff, vmcompass.com slash blog. This is a classic blog kind of website in that there's an article. The latest one was what does the UPC symbol on comics mean? So I've got an article about that, February 6th. The one before that, uh, Cool Comic Book Covers, Mighty Thor number 1, November. Before that, uh, Comic Book Podcast, November 4th. So this is the classic blog format. The latest article pushes down from the home page the older articles. Then you've got next page. So you go to the next page, you get another one here. You get another one here, get another one here, and then next page. So this is the classic blog. New articles push down the older articles. And by default, that's what our WordPress does. We've built a website that is more of a blog than a website. And that means that the latest content that we add will push down the older content. <clears throat> Let me show you this one, this other client. This is another restaurant. 
there on uh, 3rd Avenue. This is an Italian food restaurant. We built them this site. It's also WordPress. Um, we did their photography and their design and all of that stuff. And so on this particular site, this is what you would call a static website. There is this animation that is moving, but that's not what we mean. We mean that the front page doesn't change. We can change it, of course, but I'm saying it doesn't change like a blog. A blog type of website, the home page updates every time you add a new post. This one, we don't need to change it all the time. It's always the same phone number and the hours of operation and this home page welcome text. So this is a static type of website. It's also WordPress. And in between the two is hybrid, which is what this Texcoco site that I showed earlier was. This one we would say is hybrid because it's got content that is static. We've got the slideshow that slides, yes, but that doesn't change that often. We've got these call to actions at the top here. These have been updated recently, but they don't change that often. There's events and such. But here's what's changing often, the blog. We added a blog post recently about Chapulinas. You know what Chapulinas are? Grasshoppers. Grasshoppers. If you didn't know, you could click and read the blog. And uh, they're a delicacy, and yes, if you catch them and eat them, they're good, mm -hmm. I guess. Do they serve them there? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is weird. I actually started my own cricket farm like about a month ago. It's going well. I got my first batch. Do you, so you're making them to actually harvest them to... Yeah, my, my daughter, my four-year-old daughter and I are the only ones who eat them in the family that everyone else grows <laughs> Put them in a taco and they might change their tune. I put them in pizza last night. Hmm. So this kind of website is the hybrid. It's got a little of both. It's got a blog that changes when there's a new article, and it's got static content. And so what I'm saying is that if we want to choose one of those types of sites, we can right here under reading. The default is saying, we've got your latest posts will be shown on the home page. If I want a static site, we can select that. We can't quite select it yet because it needs some setup. Notice if I say, let's do a static page, it's going to say, okay, great. What page will be your front page? I would want a page that says home or welcome or something. I've only got a page called about. That won't work. So I can't set a front page yet. I haven't created it. And then it says, where would you like to put your posts? Where would you like to put your blog posts? Well, I would like to put it in a blog screen. I don't have a blog screen yet to put them. So I can't select static yet, but we'll get back to this screen a little bit later. And that's how we can create for a client either a classic blog kind of website, a static kind of website, or hybrid is a little bit different because it also requires a little bit more setup. But you can do those three kinds of sites, static, blog, hybrid. Yes? Um, with more of the websites that are static, that don't really have blogs or to it, do you find that you have to do more SEO with other outlets versus a, a hybrid website? You do, because one of the big secrets, and we'll have assignments on it, is blogging. You do want to have blogging on a modern website. And if you get the example of Texcoco, you might think, well, why would a Mexican food restaurant have a blog? Well, we've got an article there about what are chapulines, what is pulque, the celebrities that have visited all the while creating content when people search. What's Chapulines? We've got a blog post where someone could get found, where that client could get found. So yeah, you do have to spend more effort on static sites because they don't have more to offer people searching. We've got here blog pages at most. If you're going to do a blog site, this is saying show 10 articles per page and I think that's too much and that could hurt your SEO because it's too much content that is detrimental to your users one of the things one of the many things that the search engines look at when they're ranking your site is how well designed your site is how user friendly it is you might not think about that but it is is your site user friendly do people want to use your site 
can people use your site effectively? If you've got a big old screen full of 10 blog posts, your site may be slow, it may be cumbersome, it may be hard to use, and that could hurt your SEO. Notice on my blog, I've got three posts at a time because that's a big picture, big text, and then some text. Read more, and then older posts. So I'm putting on mine three at a time, and then next page. On Texcoco, I believe we've got four or five per screen, but still, when you go over to the blog, you're still not going to get deluged with ten things. You've got this one, one, two, three, four, five, and then page two, page three, page six. So the default of ten at a time, I think, is too high. Um, I would recommend to put that a little bit more conservatively, something like three to five. I'm going to put five. And actually, in the most modern sites, there's also something new here. I'm going to skip a few and I'll come back, but notice blog pages show at most five posts at a time. But if you scroll down, you're going to see to infinity and beyond scroll infinitely, off or on. This is one of the newer styles of a website. Have you visited websites where you're browsing a page of content and there is no next button? New stuff automatically shows up. You get closer to the end, there's no next button. It automatically shows you more. You see that most often on Tumblr. That's a common thing on Tumblr. That's the infinite scroll. So it's kind of a, it's kind of either or at the moment. I put five but here it's saying it's going to show seven at a time. And I believe that applies to your theme. Depending on the theme, this is going to affect it. If you don't want this infinite scroll, you can turn it off, and then that five that I put at the top will take over. Infinite scroll doesn't hurt you on your SEO like it would have been if you had it 10 here, simply because it's only going to load the amount of content necessary to display. And when it needs more, it'll display more, it'll download more, so it shouldn't slow things down. So now I'm going to back up syndication feeds. A person can subscribe to your website really easily on WordPress. They can subscribe to your blog so that they will get the latest blog posts. You have to be careful though, because as we'll go throughout the course, as much as possible, we are trying to get traffic to our website. Because it's important that we get Twitter, yes. It's important that we do blogging, yes. It's important that we do um, Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat and all of that, yes. But we don't want to keep people trapped on our Twitter. We don't want to keep them on our dead end of Snapchat or Instagram. We still want to lead people back to our website. Because at the moment, let's say I'm Victor's Bakery. I can show great cupcakes all day long on Instagram. I can post all of these amazing videos on Facebook. But I want to sell cupcakes. And I can't sell cupcakes on Facebook. I can't sell them on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Pinterest. I can't sell anything on any social network. The big companies can. You can buy something from, from a tweet on Amazon. You can buy something directly on Macy's on Pinterest. But we're not Amazon size. We're not Macy's size. We're not those big companies. So they haven't let us little guys yet sell anything on those networks. That means we still have to funnel people, we still have to guide people back to our website. So whenever I tweet that cool picture of that cupcake, I'm going to have a link there. Buy it now. And it's going to take me back to my website where they can buy it now. If someone subscribes to my blog, the default option here is send them the whole article. No, I want them to get sent a summary. They read a couple sentences, are interested. They will automatically have a button that says, read the rest. And that'll take them back to my website to read that article about Chapulines, get hungry, and order a batch. Not to read the whole thing on your inbox and then move on, because I've got other things to do. But if I really like the article, I'm going to click to follow, get on the site, and maybe get that lead into a conversion. We'll talk about these buzzwords later. And so, related to that here, how many of these do you want to send the user at a time? Ten articles at once? Probably not. I would keep this much lower, like two, maybe three. 
don't fill their inbox with content, then they'll unsubscribe and you lost a potential customer. And don't send them the whole thing. They're not going to read it. If they really want to read it, they'll follow the link. At the moment, we've got this testing website that you may or may not really want to keep. And at the moment, our site visibility is that we are being found by the search engines. If this is a testing site, maybe say, discourage search engines, meaning, you know, don't let the search engines find me. Or, so that's the one, uh, if I have your web address, I can still visit your site. If we select option two. But if I select the third option, now it's hidden, no one can see it unless I approve people to see it. For the assignment, I recommend um, either allow search engines or discourage search engines. I don't recommend for the assignment private, because then I can't see your work to give you a grade. So I would suggest put it on discourage. If I have your web address, I can see your website, but the search engines won't, uh, might not see it. Have you ever been to a website, you've read an article, it was really good, and then at the end of the article, there's links like, you might also like this. Maybe read that one. So we can do that very easily here in WordPress. It's on by default. Show related content after post. Someone reads an article, says, why not read these also? The point of that is the longer you keep someone on your site, the more possibility there is that they complete the goal. I'm trying to sell cupcakes, I'm trying to get donations to my animal shelter, I'm trying to get booked for uh, bookings for my band, I'm trying to get people to read my awesome political commentary, whatever. Whatever you're trying to do online, the longer you keep someone on your site, the more they are apt to accomplish your ultimate goal. So that's why we mm -hmm. might want to do this. Related content. And I would suggest to activate the option of use a large and visually striking layout because that'll take a picture from your article and make it out there like that and it might catch attention better than plain text because we're kind of getting used to ignoring plain text especially when it's on the side or at the bottom I think of it as an ad I might not even notice it but if it's got an interesting picture that stands out and that's a whole arts and science that we'll talk about that might catch attention better than that picture Someone clicks, they read another article, and then they're convinced, yes, I do want to hire them for web design. I do want to donate to their Kickstarter, etc. There's that scroll, enhanced feeds, don't worry about that. Followers, all of this is good. If someone subscribes to your site, this is the message that they will get. If you want it to be something else, you can change that. I'll leave the defaults. And remember to save at the bottom. Let's look at one more. Or any questions on this page? Let's look at one more here. Settings, discussion. Um, people, uh, for a long time, when my company would work for a client, they would ask us for features that were doable but more complicated in the classic way of Dreamweaver. You, they would ask, for example, for the ability for people to add a comment to the site. And it's doable on Dreamweaver, but it's a little complicated. They would ask for the ability for people to comment on a forum and such. It's a little complicated on classic Dreamweaver. WordPress has those sorts of features built in. You can turn them on or off very easily. In this screen here, notice we've got the third option at the top, default article settings. Allow people to post comments on new articles, yes or no. So great, I can let people comment on my site. That has some value of SEO, 
there's many factors to SEO, but one factor is that people can uh, create a community on your site, can, can create comments, can give you traffic, backlinks, and such, which we'll talk about in detail, but um, commenting could be valuable to your SEO. The great thing about anyone being able to post on your site is that you can create community. The bad thing is that then any crazy person can write any crazy thing on your site. Mm -hmm. So you might say, okay, I'll turn this off. But that could be detrimental to your SEO with, with the other many things we'll talk about. Let's say, though, that you do want people to comment. So then I would highly recommend you scroll down to the section before a comment appears, comment must be manually approved. I would highly recommend that. If you're going to let people comment, you're going to become a comment moderator. And there's pros and cons to that. Pros are that you are going to get good comments to show up on your site, that it's not full of spammers and scammers and flamers and all of these people that are going to bring down the quality of your site. Because negative quality of your site is also going to affect your SEO negatively. If Google sees that you've got all these spam comments, you're a spam site. And then you're not going to rank well. Even though I believe you, you're not a spam site. Google won't. So you're going to have to spend time moderating. But the cool thing is you will get an email. And right in your inbox, here's the comment, a little preview of it. Click a button, approve, deny, spam. Right from the email, click spam. doesn't show up on your site and the spammer gets put in the blacklist. You click deny. Maybe it was not a spam comment, but you don't want their weird political rants on your own weird political ranty website. You want your own comments. So then you put deny, and their comment doesn't show up, but they can put another one later. And you can click approve, of course, and it shows up easily. The downside, of course, is that now you're a comment moderator. And if you've got a lot of traffic to your site, you may be spending a lot of time pressing up a deny or approve or whatever. And there is a plugin that we will look at that will help us with this so that we're not spending all our time moderating spam comments. You might not want any comments at all. Well, just turn it off then. And we'll see later, we will have the ability to turn on and off comments per item. We could say, all of our blog posts have comment ability, but we'll turn it off for this one because it's super controversial. So we can. Or vice versa. We have no comments active for any content, but we turn on comments for one article that we do want comments, which then we can turn off again if we want. So I'm going to leave allow people to comment, but I will turn on comment must be approved. And I'm going to get an email anyone, when anyone posts a comment and when I have a moderated comment to deal with. That's good. These other defaults, don't worry about them just yet. Comment moderation, all of this stuff, don't worry, it's all good. Uh, right here, this is one of the things that's automatic that will be helping you deal with the spam comments. Something called a kismet anti-spam strictness. At the moment, it's set to strict. Silently discard the worst and most pervasive spam, or always put spam in the spam folder for you to review. This default is fine. Akismet is a good extra little feature that helps guard against the spam, and um, it's going to help you uh, work on your site better because it's not going to flood your inbox with so many approval requests. Avatars, if someone comments, they'll get an icon. That's all good. Don't worry. All of this stuff. This is what I'm saying also that this is a uh, the WordPress.com site has aspects of a social media. So right here, people can like. This is different from a Facebook like. This is a WordPress like. People can like your content, uh, your web pages and such. And uh, the thing about that is that popularity breeds popularity you've probably been inclined either consciously or subconsciously when you see something online and you see that it has a lot of activity you want to join in you see that there's likes or retweets or whatever and you want to like it or retweet it um, you may see an article that has no comments no retweets it's a ghost town and you're probably inclined like no nah, I don't care I won't comment either so if you do show the popularity of your content that'll create more popularity more traffic
And what would you like it to say when someone is going to comment? Would you like it to say, leave a reply? Or make it say something else like, comment, why not? Whatever you'd like. When you make any changes, remember to save. We'll do one more thing and then we'll wrap it up with some lab time. Um, we've created an account here. We've uh, explored a few of these settings that I recommend for SEO and such. Let's mention a couple of, con of things regarding content. We have posts. We have pages. WordPress calls them both collectively articles. Posts and pages. Let me show you a concrete example of what they are. On my site, all of these articles related to this comic book stuff, all of these are posts because I add a post and it pushes down the older post. So these are classic blog posts. This blog post pushes down the older one. So posts are related to the blog, things that change on a regular basis. Pages are more for static content that doesn't change that often. On my comic site here, I've got a page called About. On that About page, this is not changing very often. It's a little bit of information about myself. I can change it whenever I want, but I don't change it that often. I'm most often adding new blog posts. So pages are more for static content, things that don't change often, an about page, a contact page, <coughs> other things like that. A, um, a post does change. It's for um, new articles. So that's why here in WordPress we've got a section of posts and a section of pages. We're going to create a post to see how that's like, and then next time we'll create pages. Hover over posts, and let's select add new. We're going to add a new blog post. And I'll mention it several times till we get to the assignment. It is highly recommended for modern SEO on whatever type of site to have a blog. We'll get to all of the details of that later. Let's start thinking about on a regular basis, let me write it over here actually, modern SEO uses blogs. Writing something on a regular basis helps. Helps you get found by the search engines. When we get to those lessons, we'll explain why in detail. But some goals to think about when we get there. For example, 100 words, 100 new words per month. A very good goal for beginners. Better would be 100 words per day. A brand new article every day of 100 words. That's a lot to ask for, obviously. But the big websites with a lot of traffic do this. They post five articles a day. They get a lot of traffic because they're putting out so much content when someone searches how to use Periscope. There's going to be bunches of articles out there of people creating these tutorials um, because more content is more of a possibility of being found when someone searches. So as a beginner, if I make a goal that once a month I'm going to write a new article of 100 words, and you're going to see you're going to get to 100 words very fast, that's a very good goal. You're putting out content for the search engines to find. Not just your static website that you haven't updated in a year. But if you're adding one new article once a month, 100 words, that's going to be much better for you. And we'll have an assignment on that later. That's something to start to think about. Every kind of site, we can figure out things to write about. Uh, most likely we'll have an activity where we brainstorm that later. Uh, what I'm getting at is, let's go over to Posts, and then click Add New. 
this is our fake test site. It doesn't matter really what we write here, but I just want to show you the. this is the classic uh, WordPress editor. This is what we're going to use a lot because it's this kind of editor. We'll see it over and over in the posts, in the pages, if we create products, this sort of editor, we see it over and over. It asks us for a title and then the content. So at the top here, I'm going to write um, CAS 255 Day 2. And then click on the editor down here. If I was making a website in the classic way of Dreamweaver and such, I would have to create a new file, I would save the file, I would link the file, all of that stuff. In WordPress, a lot of that is very automatic. I creating, I'm creating a new page, and as soon as I click down here to start writing, did you notice this appeared from the link? It created a it created a file for us, it created a web address for us, and it linked it for us. We can edit those things to some degree, but it's all automatic, which saves us some effort. Notice we do have an edit button, and it will let us edit the final piece of it there, not every bit of it. That's okay. We'll see later that we can edit things in a different way. But when we get more advanced soon, we're going to see this is not that good of, an, of a title. That's okay. If I was really doing this for my real bakery website and all of that, I would craft a title here that was, is much more SEO savvy. We'll get to it later. But I just want to show here, we've got this editor. And notice it's pretty simple. I've got bold and bullet points and such. Not that complex. At the very end, click your toggle toolbar icon. So the very last icon of this row, click that. You have a few more options. You have this format, like, you know, sizes and such. And you've got justification and text colors and indenting and such. There's your undo and there's your redo and help. Not that complicated. There's nothing here about making columns or um, an obvious way to do text wrapping around a picture. You know, those more complex graphic design things. We don't have that much of an ability here. And this is one of the big um, gripes that people have with WordPress, that there's not a lot built in very easily to make nice looking articles. We will be able to when we talk about plugins and such, but the default here is not that exciting. But that's okay because the big secret of SEO, it's the content. It's not the bells and whistles, it's the content. Your text, your content, pictures and such. So here let's write, um, whatever, three things I learned today. I'm going to write some bullet points. I'm just writing any content just to show you. It's a basic text editor. What did we learn today? WordPress.org is the power user version. WordPress.com is the training wheels. WordPress powers 25 percent of the world's sites. WordPress is cool. Bold, italics, basic stuff. You know, you can write whatever you want here. And notice we can also insert various things. If I wanted to insert a picture, a video, sound, and such, I have it up here. Add media. I can do things like add a poll, a contact form, location. Location might be useful if I'm writing a blog post about the sale happening this Sunday in the store only. So if I add a location, that will allow people that are on their mobile device reading my blog post to click to get directions, to get a map to my shop. Let's uh, write a little something and then press enter a couple of times. And then there's an icon, the third icon on the first row at the right, 
there's an icon that to me always looked like the the stripe on the middle of the road. But what that is is the read more tag. On my site, my blog here, I've got a teaser. I've got a picture, a little bit of text, and then continue reading. I've got some picture, some text, continue reading. So I click on that, a user clicks on that, and then they can read the whole article. The way you do that is with this read more. I'm going to say right here, I'm going to add read more, and it adds this little divider. So then on the next line, I can write the rest of my article. So even though I've said elsewhere that I'm going to be showing you know, five articles at a time, I still don't want to show all the complete five articles at once. That could slow down my site. That could, anno that could annoy my users. They're going to skip this wall of text. That could hurt my SEO. So I am putting a snippet of content. I'm putting whatever I want and then read more. If the person is enticed enough by the title and my little preview there, they might read more. If they don't, hopefully they'll read something else. <clears throat> on software for creating a website like Dreamweaver, usually I would be working on my files on my computer. I would edit them, I would check that they look good, etc., and then I would upload them to a server. 99% of the time, you're going to work with WordPress on a live server. That's what we've got here. We are on the internet right now. When we get to the point where we buy an account over at GoDaddy, Bluehost, whatever, we'll have the same thing. I'm going to have victorsbakery.com, and I'm going to have WordPress live on the internet. And that means that as soon as I click publish here, it'll be visible to everyone. I can click save temporarily. When I click publish, it'll be visible. I'm going to click publish. And then it'll say, you might not be able to click publish if you haven't uh, confirmed your email address. So if you have, if you don't have published, that's okay. Just save it as a draft. You want to confirm your email address at some point. And I've got mine confirmed. I had published, and so it got published. It's a status, published. It's visible publicly. Anyone can see it. I published it on that date, and all of that is editable. So I created a blog post I want to see what it looks like because I'm in the back end, I'm in the editor. We have the concept of the editor, we have the back end, we have the front end. Back end is the dashboard. Back end is the control panel where I'm editing my site. Front end is the visible part of the site that the regular people see. Reminding me again, how do I get back to the regular screen of my website? Like what my users see? Visit website, easy. Hover over my site and go to visit, go to view site. Someone visits my site, the cool victorsbakerycom.wordpress.com. You're gonna see my text that I wrote up here. You're gonna see my latest blog post right there, published February 10th. That's what I wrote. If they're interesting, continue reading. If I go then, if a user browses here and clicks continue reading, they will see the rest of the article, very useful article, and then at the end they will then see the ability to comment, why not? Default, built in. They can write whatever crazy thing they want, but I will get an email that says, you have a new comment, please moderate it. here, let's say I'm going there and I'm going to add a comment, it's going to ask me, it's going to have a little bit of a protection, the person has to type their email, a name, and then their comment, and then they can post, but I'm going to get the notification before it goes live. And this is built in too, clients were always asking for this, how can I have the ability for people to use Twitter or Facebook, whatever, it's built into WordPress.
know how the built-in caption the closest at the moment is simply this uh, filling in information, but later on we can activate more powerful versions. So for the moment, we spent the day, we created a site on WordPress, we looked at a couple of settings here and there, we created a basic post, we'll get into more detail later about adding more content and such. But the point of this is we're going to learn a little bit of WordPress to have something to show for it because then the bigger focus of the class is we need to talk about marketing, we need to talk about social media, we need to talk about blogging and all of that. And we can run this whole site if you'd like completely with a fake company, sure. But I would recommend, if you're going to be serious, to start thinking about how what kind of website we're going to create, uh, what you're going to show. Are you going to be a web designer? Make a web design portfolio website. Are you going to try to be, you know, uh, uh, a, an attorney? You need, you need a website for that. Maybe build it here, etc. And so we want to have something real to show for it a real website to market, a real website to, to optimize so that it gets found. And then at the end of the course, if this was just for test, we'll see, we can delete this. We can turn it off, walk away from it, and no problem. But um, we do need something to optimize, and this is the something we'll use for a bit, and then eventually we'll graduate to the full-featured GoDaddy, Bluehost, whatever, version later. Any questions on what we've talked about today? Yes. Yeah, like some of the like homework assignment, just like quick one-off stuff that we're going to be doing. Is there really an issue you think for like it being indexed and or stick, getting getting indexed by like the Wayback Machine or whatever? If you're just screwing around. I don't know. That's up to. It doesn't matter, right? If you do it exactly. For a while, you yeah. Know, whatever the newer content is, once you take it more serious or have more time to devote to the content, it'll push it. Out, yeah, that's why you want to create content that will take over the old content. So yeah. if you're going to do this seriously, that is something to think about. It may be archived somewhere. Google might make a cache copy of yeah. it and whatever. So you can decide to make this all fake. You can make it real, but then make it better as time goes on. Yeah. And then when you make it better, it'll take over the older stuff. Because that, that's the thing that's always been, I've always been kind of like, oh, I should make a fake one just so I don't. But then I'm like, what a hassle. I want to work with. But I, I don't know, with something that I would want at some point to be important. Mm -hmm. But then you kind of don't want to waste that, that name. Right. Like, I don't know. But it, it's, people shouldn't worry too much about it, right? No, because it's also fluid. Um, you, uh, you can make a website whenever you want and add to it and improve upon it and so forth. Yeah. One thing I will say, though, that there is some value to the longevity of your presence online. Yeah. So if you've got a website, that have, if you've got that name that you've that you've had for two years, that's a little bit more valuable than one you created two weeks ago. Yeah, that is something to think about, but not the only thing to think about. We're going to think about lots of things. But that's yeah. one of the things to think about: the longevity of your online presence. What's that? You go to Google and then you show us see all the results there. Not just yet, because we're so new. Yeah. Um, do, do you see? You know how like this, you know, but let, let me let me finish that let me finish the answer. So, Joey, uh, it, you know we're so new here. We're not really going to find ourselves yet. If you've got an online presence and you search for yourself, you might you might find yourself. And we will have these activities where we actually search for ourselves and all of that stuff. Uh, but we'll get to that. Question. No, yeah, what I was going to say is um, you know how they have you know people label white hat, black hat, or gray hat, or whatever. To, to your point, like I read articles about whether it's worth the hassle, but I don't know if it's bad to buy, you know, an older domain and like go through the hassle of rebuilding those 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 things and all that. Do, do you know if if uh, I know it's looking into a crystal ball to see if Google's current algorithm like looks at it as bad, but is that is that like a bad thing? <laughs> It could be more hassle than it's worth because if you try to get a, a, a domain that might have had a lot of negativity associated to it, if it was a spam site, you're going to have a lot of trouble perhaps yeah. climbing out of that negative SEO hole. Yeah. And it might not be worth it. It might be just better to start off, start up new. Because 
one of the big things in the old days were EDMs or EMDs, exact, exact match domains. I needed to have, uh, you know, pizza eastlake.com. I needed to have that because those are my keywords, pizza in Eastlake. But that got taken, and it got taken over by spammers, and they took the .com and the .net and the .org and the .biz and everything. So that do domain name, to some degree, is tainted. So nowadays, the search engines put less emphasis on the exact matching domain. You don't have to have the exact keywords up on your domain. I could be, I could have a, a weird, uh, you know, piz paz eat z, whatever. Yeah. I could have almost any weird name yeah. and work at optimizing it. Because before I learned about it, what the heck's a Facebook? What's a Twitter? Yeah. What's a Behance? What's a Flickr? What's a Peach? You know, what's all of these things? I don't know. But as you build a presence around them, then they have a meaning. So I wouldn't worry about getting a, you know, an older domain and such, or, or really trying to get the exact match domain. We can work at making anything work. Yeah. Do, do you know what kind of recourse a company can have if they registered a fictitious business name and have conducted business for a long time and you have a squad? <clears throat> I mean, do you just take that up with, with, with your local court or something? Or? That's so complicated, because it could be that the squatter is out of the jurisdiction of the US. They could have. Uh, they could have this. They could have this set up in China, Russia, Mexico, wherever, Canada. They could have this set up anywhere, and you're not going to take someone to court in a in a U.S. court from you know Greenland, really. So if they're an American company, maybe you might have some recourse. But it is, then you're going to have to think: Is it going to be more expensive to go through litigation, which will cost me ten thousand dollars, if I just paid them the five hundred they were asking for? And yes, it sounds like extortion. But get pizpazpizzi.com, and you're fine. This past pizza .com. Pull that one <laughs> Copyrighted, 2016. All right, everyone, so we're going to wrap up at this point. I'm going to upload the videos. You can watch them. I believe if you sent me an email, I might not have sent everyone the link just yet. I have an inbox with lots of stuff, so I'll get to you eventually. But I'll send you the link to these videos. You can catch up on all of the things we've, we've done. There's no homework yet today. We're going to have maybe one, maybe two more days on WordPress, then a homework, and then we'll proceed. So let's have a little lab time, and then we'll see you next time.